My name's Kelsey, and I am making fun of teaching. Joining us today is Kelsey Kaczynski, a teacher, artist, poet, and creative force from right here in Princeton, New Jersey. Not only is she a dynamic teacher in the classroom, but she brings her boundless creativity and love for learning and teaching on the road as well with her friend Sunny. Sunny is a 2005 bluebird microbird. Ooh. Um, that was used in the school system in Pennsylvania and then was purchased by a woman who wanted to turn it into a food truck, which is why it says Randy's <laughs> Kitchen. It was Grandy. And the other side just says Itchen. <laughs> so. And so now when did you have the thought or the idea or, you know, how did it come about that you said this is what I... This is what I need in my life. Well, I it fills so many spots in in, in my life. Um, so being like being a single parent for one thing, um, and wanting to have adventures with my child mm. um, and for myself too, which is difficult when you are, are on a budget, obviously. Um, and so that was part of the thinking that it could be an RV for us that would allow us to travel um, more often. Mm. And also I've been doing private art lessons um, for a bunch of years. It helps, it helps me just have something else going on outside of school, which is good for my mind. Um, so it's an art studio also. It's not finished yet. It's like halfway done. There's still a lot that needs to go on the inside. Um, but the idea was that I would be able to have my own art studio without paying Princeton rent for it. Wow. Um, so basically, you know, it's like, I, yeah, I, I, I invested a, some of my savings, a lot of it, into this project. Um, but now to maintain it, I'm paying basically just for insurance. Uh, so Kelsey, uh, tell us the story of how you got into teaching. What's your origin story as an educator? I don't really know when I started teaching. Um, I had some mentors as a kid, um, including the teacher who was here before me, Jean Fassette. Um, and there was a woman named Heather Barros who still teaches art in Princeton. And she hired me to work at her after-school art program when I was like 14. Um, and I did that, I think, every day until 5 o'clock or 5.30 or something like that. Um, so I got to watch her, and I loved the way that she was so gentle. Um, and I didn't, I guess I didn't really think of myself as a gentle person, and I wanted to be more like that. Um, so I didn't, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. It wasn't really something that I thought about very much um, or was asked about very much. Um, so when I graduated from Mason Gross, um, where I studied fine art, I ran into Jean, who was the art teacher here, and he told me that he'd fallen in love and needed to move to France to be with this woman, who's the love of his life, and that he, wanted me to come and replace him at school. Um, and I, you know, I had some experience, but I studied art, I didn't study education. Okay. So when I got here, I worked as a substitute at Princeton Friends School and at the after school program and basically was here from like 7.30 to 6 every day. Wow. Um, and worked hard to get everyone, um, like to introduce myself to everyone and and get in with the 
of school and to really understand it. Okay. Um, it's not that exciting. It's not like being bitten by a shark and then you're like, shark teacher. I mean... What keeps you teaching? Um, they have really good coffee here. Like, small world coffee every day. Same? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that and... I don't, I don't experience the kind of satisfaction in my life that I get here. Mm. Um, and it's like the wonder, I think. It's it's not just like me being a teacher, like the, the community teaches me so much. And I get to I get to watch them light, you know, those sparks happen yeah. when they light up and they they understand something or they get tears in their eyes, you know, because for the first time they have a breakthrough and or they or learn to be more gentle or loving to themselves or something like that, that kind of wondrous experience of being with another person in their like deep place there isn't another kind of satisfaction like that i'd be a good bartender <laughs> i'd be a great bartender but um kids aren't allowed in bars so. <laughs> unless i mean if this is your bar oh milk bar milk bar there you go. We germ, skim milk. <laughs> Good to go. I've moved up to 1%. Thank you very much. Uh, this interview's over. <laughs> um, well, what would you say is your number one classroom teaching superpower? And how did you discover it? I would say loving presence. Um, is the most important thing in any relationship. Um, but I'm I'm super familiar with feelings of like insecurity and shame and, and and just not having the tools to to know how to get through like your day, not just your life, like your day as right. a kid. So you come into class having been in another class before and a different one before that, and you're having interactions with people all day long that no one else is aware of and you're just carrying your experience alone no matter how old you are and I think that like understanding that and really appreciating that a child is living a real life and when they enter your classroom um, it's not suddenly like you know oh it's this space it's all about this it's all about me or anything like that and like loving presence for me means you come in and I'm as aware as I possibly can be of you and I'm like tracking you um, in a loving way. That's so much better than just loving like presence, like just getting presence and being like I love this because <laughs> it's oh I get more because I feel like there are those people that just live for the gifts that they're going to get. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, what I was actually talking about is when my art supplies arrive at the beginning of the school year, and I'm like, I'm loving these presents. <laughs> okay, so Kels, if you were hiring a new teacher, what would be the most important skill or experience that you would look for in an individual? So I would want someone who is prepared to learn from others. Um, If you come in with your own excitement about learning and your own appreciation for what every other person in your community has to offer, um, it, it enriches everybody's experience together. So that that's why a lot of the time I choose projects that I've never done before or things that I want to learn because kids can tell when you're bored. Mm. <laughs> um, so if I were to hire a new teacher, it would I would want someone who has a love of learning, lifelong learning, never wants to stop growing, and someone who's really curious. Um, once you decide that you know everything and you, you, you've stopped learning and you've sort of reached your limit. Mm -hmm. You get promoted? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. No, I um, yeah, 
I think that would probably be the most important thing. Um, <laughs> all right, so it is time for uh, So Fun or No Fun. Um, let's start with paint by numbers. So fun or no fun? So fun. Uh, shopping on Amazon. That's tricky. Mm. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Um. Oh God, it, it is so fun, but I am. Um, but hold on, let me start again. <laughs> Five seconds. Oh God, <laughs> they advertise on Breitbart Media, and I have a problem with that. That is. That's no fun. Okay. All right. So we have to end on racism what no <laughs> is no fun. <laughs> that is a homophobia. Ooh, no oh, you got some pivots, girl. That was good. Shopping, so fun. That but... was good. How about back to school commercials? No fun. No fun. I don't watch TV still. Substitute teaching. Ooh, um, yeah, so fun. So fun. Both from your experience as a substitute and experiencing substitutes? Um, I can imagine that the substitute teachers that taught me had no fun. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. And I'm Fair enough. sorry. Fair enough. Okay. Um, how about uh, talking politics with dinner guests? Ooh, um, I mean, it, doesn't, it depends on the dinner guest, right? Mm, Ooh, I can't say that. It has to be so fun or no fun. Um, uh, no fun. No fun. Okay. Because, yeah, it makes, yeah. I respect that. It makes me sad and angry no matter who I'm talking to. Mm, mm, I like the way that you came down on that <laughs> emphatically. Um, <laughs> how about fast food? Oh, man, it's just, it's also complicated. Look, I didn't do this to be easy. I'm just going to say no, fun. Okay, okay. Uh, but how I about... love Whoppers. <laughs> Pickles. <laughs> there are no caveats here. No. There are no caveats. How about uh, working out at the gym? Don't you know that your soul is an abstract space? I can't just come in to that place and be like, politics, fast food, <laughs> black and white. That's all it is. That's the next one. Working out at the gym? Working out at the gym. No fun. No fun. Uh, we should do like a Freaky Friday thing uh -huh. where you can have my life and you can go to the gym for me. I do love it. I do find it and so I'm fun. And I'm going to go and live your life and make you really fat. <laughs> Get those whoppers. <laughs> um, <laughs> eat them with dinner guests and talk politics <laughs> of Amazon. Um, how about silence? Road trips. Mm, thinking about them is so fun. <laughs> it's like planning them and thinking about them mm -hmm. is so fun. Okay, okay, respect that. Doing them, like driving 12 hours with a three year old. Yeah. <laughs> that's gotta be, that's gotta be so fun. In the rain. Oh, more fun. She's screaming. Um, you know what? Let's... You can't hear her, really, because you're in the front of the bus. Like, Mommy! <laughs> Mommy! And I'm like, what? Oh. And she's like, that cloud looks like a witch. <laughs> so fun or no fun? Improvised interview questions. So fun. What is that called? Chinning. There's a name for it. <laughs>